previously on X-Frame. Hey, Bob, I dug this hole. I was tricked. I may have made a serious miscalculation. Emotional damage. Well, I guess I got some repairs to do. Now I'm all proud of myself. Yay. Don't do that. Hello and welcome to our channel, Think Build Test. In this episode, we're going to be taking this ordinary pit into the extraordinary. As you saw, we're bringing down metal in here. We're going to start fitting things up. I'm going to discuss with you all, the viewers, my design along the process because how many of us out here are visual learners? This guy. So taking something and just putting it on paper, my brain doesn't handle it very well. So if you can relate, then you're going to enjoy this series because we're going to take and lay stuff out. And I like to call this visual engineering, practical engineering. Now, this channel isn't exactly a how-to channel. This is a what-if channel. So I don't already know the solution when I'm going into this. I have ideas of how I want it to take shape, but if you're along for this journey, then you're going to see where we have to make engineering modifications and readjust our thinking and recalibrate because our initial thoughts weren't always the best thoughts. But as we're getting to practical application, we start to discover things and maybe we learn why things are already done a certain way and maybe we find a new way to do it better. So in this video, we're going to conceptualize our hydraulic floor X-frame and see how we can make it come to life. So there's already a lot of X-frames out there for us to mimic and to take from to build upon, but some of those have different space requirements. Some of them have less space constraints so they can stack the bars on each other and they can weld heavier gussets. But for our application, we want ours to be able to lay as flat as possible in the bottom of this floor so we didn't have to dig this pit any deeper than necessary. But we want to also have plenty of strength and rigidity to have lifting force up so that we can meet as many lifting objectives as we can. So some of the things we've been talked about that we might want to lift in here would be a motorcycle, welding table, and up to and including a half of a vehicle if we can hook this underneath the frame. We're going to talk about all those things and we're going to start to look at the restraints that we have based on the equipment and space we have. Here are the key elements of an X-frame. One end has to be two fixed pieces. So we're going to make our fixed end the side closest to the garage door, which is this side. So both of these ends are going to be on fixed pivot points that will not slide in and out. Now the other side of the X-frame, that end is going to have rollers on it. So it will have rails to which the roller rolls on for the bottom and rails for which the roller rolls on for the top. Okay, so first off, let's get an idea of something we want to kind of mimic to make this be as successful as we can without having to fully reinvent the wheel. So if you go to the Harbor Freight website or if you look at any videos, they have a car X lift. So one of the main differences is the floor does not have any rails that which the wheels are sliding on. Those wheels are sliding only on the concrete because of the continual track that we're going to have this on and it'll just continually be wearing on that same one. I don't want to go straight to the concrete. I want to have a steel rail down here for that bottom wheel so that we don't start to create cracks and dust out of our concrete. We'll be displacing our bottom weight with this angle iron rail. Now, I could have made this bottom rail just add a flat strap, but I wanted to add a little bit of rigidity so when we weld up this end to the fixed point and it pulls across that, so it'll resist any twisting and give us a good base platform. Okay, so we've talked briefly about our bottom rail situation and how that's going to work. Now, one of our X-frame beams has to be on the center 
and one has to be on the outside as they as they come up and down this way or this way so we have a decision to make which is going to be our outside roller beam the initial idea is that i want the top frame to be on the outside so that we'll have more support when we're walking towards the edge right here if our fixed point is here down on the ground then we want our outside roller to be rolling here out at the end for support here so we'll have a good secure plate place to lay our plates with some pins for the decking but we'll have a frame that can stand alone on its own a thought of concern that we want is when this is riding up and down right through here if something were to happen and you got your fingers caught here we would want some clearance room so we wouldn't want this so close that it chop your fingers your hands off we want a little bit of room for it to want to be able to bump to one side or the other and have some gap clearance. So I want to have probably a whole hand length in between these two rails. So this is going to set our outside boundary for our top frame between this rail, that rail, and enough room to have our hands in here. Now we're going to mitigate this gap by having a big plush cushy rubber seal that will be mounted to this outside and that'll also help to kind of clean our walls as it goes up and down from any kind of critters and spider webs. From the beginning we want to have a safety mindset in this because this could potentially be a very dangerous thing if things go wrong. So we're going to put interlocks and fail safes in our build as we go along. So let's take a look back down here at our floor space requirements. So we're going to want to be able to weld some gussets in between these two frame systems to keep them parallel with each other as they go up and down. If we leave this all the way down flush to get our flattest platform that we can get, then this outside one isn't going to get any gusseting. So we can mitigate that in two ways. We can make the top of the X a little bit shorter so that we can gusset the tips of the longer pieces or we can have this where it doesn't rest completely flat but give it about a two inch raise on one side and that'll give us some surface area to weld to it for gusseting so we're going to use probably a combination of those two tactics where the inside roller pieces where the two pieces that come to the top are going to be a couple inches shorter so that we can weld the outsides but also having an offset so let's see what that kind of looks like and what kind of height we're looking at with the offsets for camera visualization so you can see all the pieces I'm gonna leave these separated out but the actual is gonna look like this side so we'll have our rail underneath this bar now we have it here this outside piece will be fixed down low to the floor and this piece will rest up. This will give us the capability to gusset this lower side here to here, from here to there. So on the rolling end, on the opposite side, we'll have the inverse. So what we have to be concerned about is the outside of the X-frame being able to be gusseted. So we'll be able to take a piece here, having this end offset it up, we'll be able to gusset here and then here. So we'll have four additional places that we can gusset the outside frame on that end and this end by having this rest offset. So the inside X-frame won't need near as much attention because we can gusset it anywhere we want. There's no obstructions between here. But the outsides, we have to be able to gusset for rigidity. So what's going to be our optimum height for having the resting offset on that frame? So we dug this pit with me in mind. With my shoes on, I am six foot six. So if we take a measurement of what's left over, so we have about six inches to the top of this, but it's not likely I'm going to have a sports car in here that's so low that it's perfectly here. 
So if my head's a couple inches over, then it's not gonna be a big deal. I still won't be having to duck at that point. So let's say six inches plus two inches, that's eight inches. So we want this down here to have a total height of eight inches. So currently we have a two by four down there representing this gap. And that looked like it's gonna have a lot of good gusseting contact area. So we might leave it at that three and a half, four inch gap that our two by fours are. That's something we readily have available for spacing. And we can standardize these measurements really well by just having two by four blocks on their end. So we'll go ahead and stay with that. I wasn't sure about that until now, but I'm liking it. And until we find something that opposes that thought, we're gonna go forward with it. Okay, so one more thing while we got this down below, and then we'll bring this X-frame up into position. Our last consideration while we have this down here is we're gonna to have to have a really solid bar where our hydraulics are gonna lift on this rising side. We'll call this the hydraulic here. We'll be planting the base of our hydraulics at this end, and they're gonna be extending this way. So somewhere on this side of the half, we'll be having to place this brace on the inside between here and here so that this can lift. Once we get our hydraulic rams in, then we'll be able to get our final set place where this is gonna go collapsed. Okay, so this will be a mock of what it will be like when the floor is all the way up. We'll use our imaginations to pretend that this is down a few inches, but this is the safe way I can do to mock it up with some blocks and some clamps. This end will be fixed. This will be a pivot only on this end on the top. And this is going to be the inside beams going up and down in the X-frame. Okay, so over here, you can see that our arms have moved in. These ends are going to be on rollers. They're going to be rolling on the inside of this rail. So we've lost about 30 inches of support from this end. So if we have to do any heavy lifting, we don't want to do it from this point to here. From here to there, it's going to be super strong, super solid. You could lift a motorcycle, lift, possibly lift a car, lift our razor up. So the only thing we want to be supporting at this height is body weight. So that we can be over here going up and down two to three hundred pounds out on the edge of this. This three inch angle iron can handle that no problem. All right, so here's the bottom side view of what this looks like. So what we can see is if this is where we plan to put the most force going up because we'll have our extended hydraulic pushing to here. So this will be our triangle of strength from the ram, from the hydraulic ram, to this point, to this point. So this is gonna be where we can do the most lifting. Whatever strength that this bar can provide from here out to this point at this angle of lift is gonna be what our limit is. As the hydraulic ram comes up here with approximately 3,000 pounds of pressure each, we're gonna be able to take that 6,000 pounds of lifting force and we'll lose whatever's on this arm to be able to lift here. So I'm hoping we'll be somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds of force that we can lift up at this angle. So we'll probably have a big bar across here with some kind of a puck system in it that goes through the floor and that'll allow us to put a ton of pressure upwards in this zone right here. So when I was initially drawing this design out, I was trying to decide where you would begin to move into the most lifting force because obviously the more laterally you are, the more you're having to push pressure up. But once you start to move this beam from a lateral position to a vertical position, now you're gaining tons of strength where you're able to push this in this way, where you're traveling more in than you are up. I used a 70% calculation that at the height of this lift, we'd be at the 70% mark of the length. And it looks like this is a nice square joint. 
with a 90 degree angle. So, so far at seven foot high, 10 foot long, we're at our 70% mark and it's looking exactly like I had it designed. We have hit the matrix of optimum lift versus travel. Now, once these things come too close, you'll be only gaining inches. You get lots of lifting height, but you only have inches of height to travel. So at this place, this will give us an opportunity for you to comment. Should we make this floor to where it will only go to flush or for platform lifting capabilities, do we want to be able to have this go higher in the air like it is currently? Comment below what we should do. How high we want it to go will determine how long our shaft length needs to be on our hydraulic ramp. Okay, so we spent quite a bit of time talking about this and I know your attention span's getting a little low. So this may be where we have to part ways on this design discussion. We'll have this be the end of part one. So on part two, we're gonna be starting to look at how are we gonna start to connect this with our joints and rollers. And so come back to see the rest of this as we use these one inch bolts to connect this frame. Building